Welcome back. Now, the Social Economic Rights and Accountability Project, SEREP, has asked President Mohamed Buhari to direct the Attorney General of the Federation and Minister of Justice, Abubakar Malami, SAN, and appropriate anti-corruption agencies to investigate alleged misuse of a 4.5 billion naira donations, uh, loans, and supports that Kogi State government obtained from the federal government, including the over 90 million naira reportedly spent on software to track COVID-19 cases in the state. Uh, discussing with me is the executive director of Serap Adito Kumbo Mumuni and a public affairs analyst Uche uh, Chuta. Let's start uh, with uh, Serap. Now, good evening to you, Mr. Mumuni. Uh, let's talk precisely uh, as per your statement of yesterday and uh, what exactly you are looking at achieving, you know, with that. Now, when when public funds are uh, said to have been suspended. We have to be sure that those funds were properly expended and were expended and accounted for. The idea of expending money by any public officer without giving account of who to the public is an is an anathema to a democratic government. That is why we say, now that there is said to be a missing COVID fund originating in Togi State, this fund and its missing net, if the user is allowed to use that one, must be probed so that the truth is known for Nigeria. All right. Uh, you said you want the truth to be known for Nigeria. Specifically, you talked about a particular over 90 million that was supposed to be spent on um, software. So far, what figures and um, what uh, supporting documents do you really have to show that uh, these funds were actually not used for what they were allocated for? You see, the idea of spending money the idea of spending money on just everything. I don't understand what um, stuff we are doing. We have to be sure that we have to be sure of the categories of stuff here that is available in respect of which the Soviet government spent in respect of COVID 19 matter. Software, software to acquire work. So I have to be clear about all these things. That is the word accountability in public expenses means. Software, software work means to protect more. We have to be, we have to be sure on the specificity of what the economy was used for. That is the point that was made, and which was made clear. You cannot just say you spend money on software. What category or what manner of software was the money spent on? We have to, we have to, to know. We have to be sure on the spending. You cannot just use the term software. We have to be sure. We have to ask questions. All right. Uh, we'll, we'll still talk uh, more with you, uh, Adito Kumbo. Let's uh, bring uh, analyst now Uche into this conversation. I'm sure you actually have followed uh, this um, development. Uh, what comes to your mind when the issue of um, probity and accountability you know, is being mentioned specifically with um, public funds and appropriation in Nigeria? Well, it has... Um, it's a welcome development. Um, the, the things which Serap does is really welcome. Um, they have a history of uh, trying to bring to to the public for a matters of account accountability. You know, and in this instance, we're talking about the Kogi State Governor, who incidentally is also um, planning to run for president. So it's 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 actually important. It's it's a, it's, it's good timing. 
also because if you want to run for president show us some accountability show us lead by example you purchase software for 300 million naira for covid we all remember how he said there's no covid in um, in, in, in kogi states and he refused to allow ncdc officials to enter into kogi states at the onset of the pandemic and right now we he, it's coming out that he actually used 300 million naira for software the world is interested in what kind of software was used. Maybe it can help solve the problem around the world and COVID ends. Um, was there a case incident, um, case incident management software for, for COVID cases? In, in that instance, that means he, had, he acknowledged that there was COVID in, in, in Kogi state. Was it, uh, uh, what exactly was the software doing? Was it here to help identify people who had COVID? Was it to help manage a database of people who had COVID and their locations? It could be for several things. Let us know about it. Let us examine it. Was it bought sourced locally? Was it sourced internationally? This is what we want in the, in the public space. We want a situation whereby uh, government officials are clear. They, they're clean with us. Not everything should just be seen as an avenue of making money. Now, many Nigerians are really angry at how you know, governments at all levels Mm. Past at all state governments, local governments, federal governments you know, handled the COVID, the COVID. You know, it was a case of a jamboree, a situation, an opportunity to eat money recklessly, which that was kept that abandoned. You know, mm. everything was COVID, COVID, COVID. And all right, so, Uche, yeah, let me just butt in here. I know well, in the wake of um, the COVID 19 pandemic, uh, there were lots of um, allocation, lots of um, donations received uh, by state and, of course, the federal government. But let's just leave that for one moment and let's talk about something Serap says. Uh, uh, it says uh, it is concerned about growing allegations of corruption and mismanagement of public funds in the uh, 36 states of Nigeria and the apparent lack of prompt, thorough, independent and transparent investigations into these allegations, allowing suspected perpetrators to frequently escape justice. We have the ICPC, we have the EFCC, we have other, um, other agencies uh, that are actually, you know, uh, saddled with the responsibility of stemming the issue of corruption in Nigeria. But most of the times, we hear of all of this uh, corruption and uh, call for probes. At the end of the day, nothing is being done. How do we begin to change this particular narrative? And this is exactly why people are losing hope in Nigeria. It's as it's in the past couple of years, it's as if no holds bad, everyone free, fall, do whatever you want, no accountability, no one's responding to anyone. That's why you hear things like, do we have a president? Who are we answerable to? Like there's no fear of anything. Like there's no people are not even, you know, before you actually try and mask corruption, people invented the seeds. Um, did contracts, maybe bogus contracts, inflicted contracts. But now they just paper contracts. You know, they award contracts on paper. Nothing is done physically. You can't verify physically. There's not, there's not even a signboard, a signpost. In those days, you put a signpost and say project in progress. But none of that is done across the nation. And that's what's making Nigerians lose hope. That are we building a country? Like, how can we survive if we continue this way? It's like a free fall for corruption by government, no stop. And this is what's making people lose hope. This is what's making Nigerians lose hope. People who are leaving the country, people who want to leave the country, people who are saying you know, that these are the small little things. That's it, like, no, there's, like, there's nothing. EFCC, like nowadays, is a joke, it's a running joke. If EFCC comes to you, it's just that they want a share of whatever you've eaten. That's all they want. All right, let's get back to Sarah. Uh... Uh, Data Kumba, I don't know if you're still on the line, but let's talk specifically right now. What do you intend to do in the coming days? Are you giving an ultimatum to the federal government or just what exactly are your next line of action? Hello, thank you, Ben. You see, we have made a one day and we intend to follow up on this issue of um, moving ahead with it. So, we will, we will better litigate on this part so that Nigeria know and we have the right to know this is a democracy. Nothing must be under the cap. You remember that 
the government of Kobe State, as far as Kobe United Napa is concerned, has said there is nothing like Kobe. You remember that? Yes, I do. So, if he is now telling us that he has spent money on certain stock here, social to do what? Is it to fight Kobe or to control Kobe? Nobody can be bamboozled bamboo like here with use of power and expression. We have to be sure that money, once they said they are spent, are well spent. And sincere accountability demands that we should know specifically on what the money was spent on. That is what we demand in Nigeria. And that is what we must have. We intend to be on this matter in case the federal government is willing to do its duty by calling on the necessary and the agency to look seriously and effectively into the matter. All right, thank you so much for your comment. Uh, that was uh, Adeito Kumbo Momini, uh, Executive Director of the Social Economic and uh, Right Accountability Project, um, SERAP. Okay, thanks for your comment. But let's just uh, get final words from our analyst um, in Canada now. Um, Uche, you have heard the position of, uh, of SERAP concerning what they would be doing in the next couple of days, uh, maybe months. Uh, but let's just uh, talk briefly on uh, how we can begin to strengthen uh, you know, anti-corruption agencies, uh, the ICPCs, the EFCC, and of course the new man in charge now, which, who is Bao. What do you really think he needs to do to actually bring this desired change? Very quickly, Uche. Well, the people have said lots of stuff about um, Bauer, the new chairman of EFCC. He's a young man. Like, he's not qualified. He's not competent. But these, these are opportunities for him to show himself. Um, in his profile, he, he, he attests that he was the one who led the Tiziani's um, investigation. We don't even know publicly what the outcome of that is. So he should show us. Use the, this situation, the Kogi state governor is um, spending 300 million naira spending as an example of that he's ready for business. ICPC, we don't, even, we don't even really hear about them anymore. They are really supposed to handle government officials. In those days, in, in previous years, we always knew who the head of ICPC was and what they were doing. But they, they, they're not quite. Nothing's, we're not hearing anything. You know, let's start trying to pretend or start trying to be a nation. We, we, we're not doing that in any way so far. You know, we, we're running ourselves like a banana republic where anything goes. Show a difference, um, Mr. Bauer. Show that you can do something. Show that you're a young man ready for business. There are lots of allegations out there. This is a simple, quick win. Low hanging fruit. Persecute, find information, find out what exactly right. is happening. All right, thank you so much, Amuchi, for your comments and your thoughts. Uh, we do appreciate it. Right, thank you very much. All right, uh, just to mention that I uh, would get uh, the comment of the Kogi state government um, subsequently and uh, let them react to all of these issues. We'll take a short break, and when we return, I'll be giving you my take. Well, here's my take. Taking prompt action to probe these allegations would promote transparency and accountability, serve the common good and good government of the Federation, which includes Kogi State. And for youth in politics, uh, leadership deficits, uh, money politics, poor internal democracy among the older parties, and an absence of a strategic political agenda pose ongoing barriers to young people playing a role in national development. Nigeria needs to change this narrative as the failure to draw this energetic and innovative sector into the work of democracy and development can have serious implications. And that's Plus Politics. I am Justin Akadanyo. We'll return again at 7 p.m. tomorrow. Bye for now.